You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. We've talked a lot of the last couple of days about what BK had to say after practice on, on Saturday. Um, and one of the things that BK talked about that we haven't circled back to, and we talked about Trey Holly, we talked about the running back depth, uh, we, we've talked about, about Kyron Lacey. One of the things that BK talked about, as so many people have had questions defensively, is the job uh, Jacobian Guillory has done this year in spring ball so far. Like Here was Brian Kelly about Jacobian after uh, practice on Saturday. In terms of stopping the run, Jacoby and Guillory has been outstanding. I mean, he is, he's singularly been, I think, in terms of what Bo Davis is looking for, he's been outstanding and he's been a stalwart. We got to find the other guy and that's what we're looking for. We're de trying to develop that second guy and, and then we'll have some depth guys behind him. Um, can you play the start of that again? I just want to hear his verbiage again with how he described Jacoby and stopping the run. In terms of stopping the run, Jacoby and Guillory has been outstanding. I mean, um, be very clear. I'm not saying he's wrong. I, I haven't been in practice every day. I've been once, so I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm I'm hopeful that that is accurate. What I can tell you is the one practice that I went to this past Saturday, and we saw the team periods. The first team offensive line dominated the defensive front seven. Uh, the rushing attempts that we saw, and while it was a thud, I mean, there was a play where LSU ran a, a ball in the A-gap with Josh Williams, and he didn't get touched. He was he was into the secondary, didn't get touched. Um, so, I, you know, I'm very hopeful for Jacoby, and I think part of the thing, you know, look, last year, Jacoby and Guillory, he had 27 tackles. He played in every game. Um, of his tackles, though, only four. Four were solo tackles. You, you had Mason Smith and Makai Wingo a year ago, uh, who, you know, Makai missed the last month of the season, as we well know. But when you look at the, the production from your defensive line, you get all the way down to Jordan Jefferson with 36 tackles before you had a, a defensive lineman. So th th these were your leading tacklers a year ago. Major Burns, Greg Penn, Andre Sam, Harold Perkins, Omar Spates, Whit Week, Zai Alexander, Sage Ryan, then Jordan Jefferson. Your ninth leading tackle before you got to a defensive any defensive lineman. Um, that's a problem, and that's a, that was a big problem you had on your defense last year. Uh, full disclosure: I think the world of Jacoby Guillory. Uh, both, you know, I, I wish the best from as a player and just as a person. I think he's awesome. He did an NIL deal with our friends over at Sunshine, uh, John Deere dealer. And I got to do a, a video shoot with him out, out in, a, in a cane field last year. And he's awesome. Like, great young man, Louisiana kid, loves LSU, is coming back for his fifth year, graduate. Like, he's exactly what you want. Like, in the, in the NIL portal era where fans think, like, the, the true college football, like, that, that's gone. He's, he's an illustration of a guy that is all of those things. So I want great things for Jacobian. Um, and I hope he does have an awesome year. And you heard BK say they're looking for the other guy. Well, you've got Jalen Lee, who's a fifth-year player. You brought in Sean Washington, who's now a third-year collegiate player. Georgia, Juco, now LSU, who's, who's massive. Um, you're bringing in Gio Paez from Wisconsin, who I think there's a lot of upside there. you got a five-star in Dominic McKinley coming in as well. They're clearly not done in the portal. They have, they, they've offered Philip Bleedy. He's going to be on campus for a visit. And I think maybe the point is when you have numbers, eventually someone's going to stick. I mean, think about a year ago. You went ham in the portal at defensive tackle. When you added Jordan Jefferson, you added Jalen Lee, you went and added a bunch of guys in the portal. You added Paris Shan from Arizona, who ended up playing in. But the point is, like, you went and added a bunch of guys out of necessity at defensive tackle. And the guy that stuck was Jordan Jefferson. He was easily your best guy. So it feels like you're going to have a lot of options this year again. My real question is, because last year you leaned so heavily on Jordan Jefferson, Makai Wingo, and then when Wingo got hurt, Mason Smith, can you actually have a rotation? Because that's when you're going to be your best. Um, real quick, 
The other player that BK talked about defensively that has really stood out so far in spring was Major Burns. And I think this was a... Li listen to the... I I'm sure this is going to stand out to you as well. Listen to the word BK used to describe Bur uh, Burns a year ago relative to how he's playing now. The one guy that I really think has made more progress than any one individual player in coverage is Major Burns. Major was a bit sloppy last year, but there were many times where, you know, we didn't have him in coverage on the right guy at the right time. He's been really, really good. I've been happy with his off the field as well, in the classroom, doing the right things. He's really taken a step up in the program and put himself squarely in a, in a position to, to be a leader. Sloppy in coverage. And I don't mean, I don't think BK meant that as an insult. I don't, think he, he, I don't think he was taking a shot at the kid. I think he was just giving you an honest answer. And let's be honest, there was a lot of that last year at LSU. So, but a big part of getting Major Burns to play better is having him at the right position, man. Major Burns doesn't need, need to be playing strong safety. He needs to be in the box. You know, he's a big dude who's physical and wants to play close to the line of scrimmage and tackle. In the star position, that's going to suit him really well. You know, major the thing about Sage Ryan is as you know, fans have have poked Sage Ryan since he's been here, and the major reason for that is because he was a five star, and and right or wrong, that's what happens when guys are highly recruited. The expectation follows. It was no dis different with with Mason Smith or or anybody else. that's a five star when they get here. There's just this this more awareness of the player, and there's a greater expectation. But also think about where Sage Ryan has played in his career. He was injured as a freshman with the hamstring deal. He's played nickel, and last year was playing boundary corner. This year, he's playing safety. He's playing a more natural position for him. I don't want Sage Ryan playing nickel, covering slot receivers. And I don't want Sage Ryan playing boundary corner. Playing in space as a physical guy, my last line of defense to tackle and defend downfield, yeah, I'm good with that. It matters. Like Put guys in a position where they're going to have the most success as opposed to just where you need them. It's... It's the old Blake. It's the old Blake Gill. And I wonder if Blake Gill's listening. I say it all the time. Like I wonder if anybody's ever told him this. It's the Hannah Griff line about Blake Gill. Loved Blake Gill when he was batting seventh and playing second base. Didn't like Blake Gill so much when he was batting third and playing shortstop. Where are you? Where are you playing on the field? Are you playing where it's best going to suit you, or are you out of position because your team needs you to be? That's what these guys were doing last year. So put them in position and see how much better they can be. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.